Good afternoon. We're here for the Auburn Housing Meeting for May 2nd, 2017. Could we please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Um, you see there's no any public comment, which there is nobody here, so I guess we will not have any. Um, if anybody's taping the meeting, which I think just um, cable channel in Auburn is, and that's it. Discussion and vote to accept the check registers for April 2017. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, director's report. Okay. As far as the vacancies go, Stoneville Heights has two. One's a first floor, the other's a second floor. The first floor is going to go to a resident that needs, that's on a second floor that needs a first floor. So that's going to be for a transfer. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have to go to the list for the other second floor apartment. Packchog has one vacancy, it's a first floor, and that's gonna go to an elderly veteran resident. And then Pheasant Court has one vacancy, and it's a two bedroom, but we have two units that are people in three bedrooms that need to go down to a two bedroom because of, so we've been moving people around based upon so, unit, unit composition. Mm -hmm. So then the f um, the three bedroom will go to the list, the emergency list, to house that. So that's where we're at with vacancies. But we have it under control. Good. Okay. Just seems like we have a lot, but mm -hmm. it's on. It's all set. I did get an email from this woman from that committee that Ann is on for housing. And she wanted um, information about the Auburn Housing Plan. So she sent me an email with some questions. And I responded to the questions. And so I just photocopied everything for you. So you can see what they're looking at. And the kinds, kinds of things that they asked us. Okay. And the information was faxed back to her. And if you think of anything else you want me to add, or, you know, I'll just now that I have her email address, I can just. That's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are at with the town as far as that goes. Then, um,. Worcester Regional Retirement sent us a letter. The retirees are getting a 3% cost of living increase. So I photocopy that letter for you. So if any retirees from the town that you know of, that's what that's about. Thank you. Okay. Then. Have you been watching on TV where um, National Grid is um, giving back to the communities they service by providing um, grant funds for different things? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. We applied for a grant, and we were successful. Wow, that's good. How much was the total grant that you received? Three hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars. What are you going to do with all that money? Wow. The money is going to replace the heating systems out here. Out here. All six. Hallelujah. All Fantastic. sixty units. That would be wonderful. We just happened to have the obsolete storage unit for heat that they were looking for. 
Hmm. All six. Go figure. Mm -hmm. Three hundred and seventy-two thousand dollars. That's wonderful. Cost to the housing authority zero. zero. The time to fill out the application. Yep. Good yeah. job. Yeah. And we should be saving, right? Because we have that obsolete mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you mind if I read that? No, and do you know what, what it would have? Do you know how bad is? it would have been to replace this? We couldn't have afforded it. So, you know how we always used Alan Kelly to fix those. Mm -hmm. Alan Kelly is aging, sure. and sooner or later he wasn't going to be able to do them. So now it's and not going to be an issue. Well, he's like the only one in this area. He's, and he's from New Hampshire. Right. It's kind of like the uh, it's an annual, savings. An annual savings kilowatt hours and also the annual savings in the Okay, so the, the, it looks like the total project cost is 372000 and that's to replace 60 mini, they're going to replace it with mini split heat pump units. So what that means is it's going to take over the heat plus the air conditioning, mm. and they'll oh, heat wow. plus air conditioning in these mini split pumps. So they'll install the ventilation so that it'll push the, the air from outside mm -hmm. in. And cool the it. only place where the um, the traditional basement uh, baseboard heat is going to stay is in the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. But heating and air conditioning will be covered, so we won't have to be putting the air conditioners That's in great. anymore. So each one, each unit will have it. Each housing unit will have its own independent mm. pump. We're thing. moving up in. Oh, that's actually when it costs you nothing. Well, that's what <laughs> it's I a mean. grant. Yep. So that'll take care of heating and air conditioning. And because they're going to be new, they're expecting us to have a savings of twenty-seven thousand forty-eight dollars a year. A year. What's that going to do to our I would assume we would go down to the Because you figure we're, we're involved with the town with Constellation yeah. Energy. Yeah. Plus, we have Lodestar Engineering, the little solar, solar place in Charlton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've, we have that, and now we're going to have this by trying to replace our obsolete equipment. Well so, done, Laurie. So that our obsolete status had a big impact on us getting the grant. Yeah, the fact that we were like a little behind. Yeah. Yes. Because I know that they're trying to encourage people to find ways to save mm -hmm. the cost of. Yeah. We were like a Eureka. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> eureka? We're saying Eureka. Did they Did actually know what that system was? Not really. No. No, it's I. It's been kind of a mystery. Well, and this is the thing. So if they can update us, then that's a big thing. Oh, yeah, of course. That's exciting. Yeah. It's really exciting. That should be a lot easier. Yeah, I love it. It's <laughs> yeah. a big grant. Yeah. And it should be cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, more efficient, yeah. How, do you know how big the units are? Like physically, how, how large they are? I think it's in. Yeah. I think the dimensions it's on are on the back. Oh, okay. You know what, Ian? All I oh, yeah, all I heard was three hundred seventy-two thousand dollars, and yeah. after that, yeah, they, where, do yeah. <laughs> where do I sign? Where do I sign? Well, because those existing things that they have in those apartments are clunkers. Yeah, they're big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they take up they take up a lot of room in the room. Yeah. So this, even if it's the same size, but we don't have to put air conditioners in the windows. Right. Right. There's all yeah. that you know, maintenance time. Saves Maintenance time, maintenance time, and then yeah. you're less apt to damage the window because you're not moving it in oh, and, no, no, no. and out. Right. So I thought that was um, pretty good. There's a couple other grants. The lighting project at um, Packachog for the hallways is moving forward. We picked out a light, and because we're going with LED lights, they're going to be yeah. brighter. Mm, yeah. You know how we had those kind of old-looking lights? They're taking those all out. They the wall lights? They were like wall, like little wall sconce things. Oh, oh, oh inside the um, hallways. In, yeah. in the hallways. Okay. So now, instead of having like a bunch of old looking wall lights, now we're going to have state of the art LED lights. And we only need two because they're very bright. And those other ones were pretty dim. They were very dim. And you know how we had to leave the lights on all the time? Mm -hmm because they're very dim. Mm. Hopefully we should save some money on the LED lights. And because we're constantly replacing the bulbs, 
yeah. the LED light bulb should last longer. Okay, so we should have a, a savings there. They're out to bid for, um, they did pick a uh, contractor to do the roofs at Pheasant Court. So we're just waiting for a date as to when they're going to start the construction down there. And then once the roofs get finished, then they can finish okay, where they left off on the siding. Right. They'll bump that all up. Then they've been working on the railings down there because they've been able to put the railings up, but now they have to go back and paint them. Mm -hmm. And of course, with the weather and everything, no sooner mm -hmm. do they get going, then it's like raining. Or it starts off rainy and then it clears up. But they're moving right along as far as the railings go. And okay. then the only other thing, they want me, the state is suggesting that I buy two more of those um, railroad containers. Because right now we are renting space with CubeSmart, where our materials are. Mm -hmm. But the state said that we would be better off to purchase two more because I've got to order a significant number of windows before the end of June for, for Packetchock Village and Pheasant Court. We have grant money, but I have in order to buy the windows, I have to have a place to put the windows. So they had suggested, and I did get prices, so I'm just going to go with the lowest bid with the best containers that, you know, they don't look like real bad. And then the guys will paint them, yeah, sure. but then we have them forever. <coughs> yes. And then we're going to be able to cover them on the grant. So okay. under the window grant, part of that grant is going to be the cost of the... For the storage, and then we won't have to use this, the cube storage place Then anymore. we can get out from under the cube right. smart place. So it's 500 bucks a month we're paying. Oh, wow. So we're going to save that, and then the, the materials will be stored out on our property. There isn't a place to put anything at, at Packajog. So we'll end up putting them here, which is okay, because the guys can take from here anyway in just deliver wherever they need. But we have to order, I have to order windows for Pheasant Court and Packachog Village in the front by the end of June. So I gotta order the containers quick so that I have them to put in, them in. Then we have grant money for the trim replacement. You know how the trim is rotted out in Packachog? So when they put the windows in, at the time we didn't have money to replace the boards that you know, like the trim boards that go along the roof, and then the trim boards that go along the... Around the windows. Around yeah. along the windows. Yeah. So another container is going to go under that grant for uh, trim replacement, and we're getting the plastic wood as opposed Good. to... So no maintenance. Yeah. yeah. Good. So we shouldn't have maintenance with the plastic wood. What do those containers go for? How much they cost? Well, we got a deal on... The ones that we already have, we got them for nineteen hundred dollars each, and those were all paid for on grants. So, I'm hoping the company that we did business the last time they're telling me are out of business. So they're like two. They're, I don't know that we're going to be able to get the same price, but we're going to look on Craigslist to see if we can find another right. deal. And we got to do kind of local because they deliver. Yeah. They drop the box. On your property, so which is good because how else would we deal with it? Yeah. Right. So the last ones came from Oxford. So we'll call the, uh, that guy, see if he still has them. If not, then we'll have to move on to somebody else. But I've got to <clears> build the cost of the two containers into the cost of the grants. Right. And the beauty of that is then we always have those containers right. you know, right. for down right. the road. Yeah. So we're going to have yeah, more. Good more work items for you know going forward there also is a disability an ada um, grant that's available to municipalities through the town yeah. so we're gonna um, look into what's required we've had a conversation with the town manager and she's gotta you know once i can find out the information i can pass it on to her but we actually have work items that would be like how this door doesn't have the the closing. No, it doesn't have the 
automatic to open opener. Up, close, oh, yeah. You know the oh, push yeah. thing? Yes. Yeah. What the they ones call it? open by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Little eye and then see yeah. something and it opens. Or yeah. either that or if or if there's a way to push a button, button. Yeah. to get the door to close. I have to go to the bank. We don't mm -hmm. have right. We don't have anything like that. So I when I started to think about how we could make all the units more accessible. Right. I mean if tubs are are part of the deal, the elderly have a tough time getting into the tubs out here and in the front of package hug because the back of package hug has the thing that lifts yeah. out. Yeah, the door. The door. Yeah. Whereas because that's that much newer, right. our other tubs don't have that door. So if we could turn around and yeah, that in there. and get It'd grant money to do the tubs, yeah. how great would that be? So we um, Denise actually had put in a call to find out what the situation is. And she did talk to two people at the state as to, because we're gonna be working with the town. And that's how it has to go through. We can't apply on our own. So it'll have to go in front of the Board of Selectmen to get permission to- Apply for the grant. To apply for the grant. And I'm gonna, um, I've already asked DHCD to help us so that it doesn't, burden the town as far as what right. would be considered accessible and what isn't. It's for, to help us write the grant so that the town manager can just present it to the Board of Selectmen as a, a done deal. Yeah, yeah, so that the work will the work right. will be done on our end and we just appreciate the fact if they vote for it. Mm -hmm. right. And it has to be done by June 1st. Wow. So it's a quick, Pretty quick. It's a quick one, but I mean, if we don't apply, we're not going to get it. Right. So because of the time constraint, I called the DHC, DHCD to ask for some help on that. Good. Because you figure Packetrack Village is the oldest. Mm -hmm. The yeah. state side is our oldest development. Right. And as far as compliance goes, if we can make some inroads there, oh, yeah. I think Definitely. that would be a, a huge thing. And then the other thing I'm trying to get is low flow toilets for pheasant <laughs> for pheasant court. <laughs> for pheasant court. We only need twenty one toilets. And they're always putting these sustainability, energy, water conservation things out there. So we have low flow toilets everywhere else. We don't have them at Pheasant Court. So we had to submit our water bills. So hopefully <clears throat> Our toilets are so bad, they'll give us new ones for free. That's good. Can we get high-rise ones at the same time? For the families? Sure. I suppose. I mean, you want little kids on a high-rise high -rise toilet? They're not that much higher, but they're high enough so that if you have a disabled person... And you can make it easier. You can make it easier for them to get, in, to get up and down. I think we could ask for that. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think we could ask. You know, them. usually the little kids you put a stool in front of the toilet anyway mm -hmm. for them to get on. And hope they make it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, just saying, that's all I have. That's it. I'm that's end on lot. the toilets. Yeah, there's yes, a, lot. a lot. But it's like it takes time. Very busy. You got to identify the items that you need help with, mm -hmm. and then you got to find the right person that. Help you, you know, get there. That has a clue. Yeah. That's great. You know, because I mean, I never, I've never really done that before. So, so far, three hundred and seventy-two thousand. I know. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. You must have good dreams. That Thank God we have an obsolete system. I know. Yeah. Who would have ever thought? Yeah, we actually something. had something that somebody was right. looking for. Right. Good right. thing yes. you put in for the grant. Yeah. Yes. Yep. She's always and you wouldn't mind, but DHCD helped me write the grant. They did. Uh -huh. Fantastic. For a federal program. But oh, that's wow. fantastic. Good. We have to work together, state. And, and this and this is together. the thing, and they have been. That's good. So I'm hoping that with the disability grant that we can get something for one of our sites. I'm hoping Packachog. You know, because I mean, we don't have like even for the wheelchair units, they don't have like an automatic thing to get into their no, no, no. unit. So if we actually take a if they can send somebody out that's good on that, that can actually look at our units to see what improvements, you know? Oh, I mean, yeah, definitely. 
I'm not sure how much any of it cost, but I guess. And we did request um, help through Mike Moore's office with the cameras, but I haven't heard cameras for Packajog. We were looking for $40,000 to do the cameras up there. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that it was supposed to be um, a part of the budget, but I don't know when their budget actually, you know, I don't know when that gets approved or if we were, but we did ask. Well, since it's a, um, a safety issue, um, could you give them another call to see where it is? Mm -hmm. Or ask them, yeah. yeah. I just didn't want to look like we were pushy. No, but... you, you know got to I mean? be pushy sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, but that's... But it could be that it's just at the wrong time of the year, like you said, that it might have to go in on the budget. Uh, it's worth a try. Yeah. And anything that we can get other people to pay for. We did have the state come in last week to look at inspections and work orders. And what we found is we have a problem with our work order system because the way we've been doing it is the resident calls up, requests a work order, but we've been waiting till they've been available to go in and do the work. Like the guys can go there two or three times before the resident says, not today, not today. Really? They not do? today. Oh, oh, yeah. Not today. She should just do it when, when they're available. So Absolutely. now they're looking at the time it takes to do a work order. Mm -hmm. So the way it's going to be now is if a resident calls in the work order, they're going to need to be home right. or the work order is getting closed out. Right. Because when they actually came in, it was they looked at the work order and compared it to the inspection and the amount of time it took. So now we will no longer be doing inspections in a big clump. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a small number of inspections and make sure all the work items are completed within a reasonable amount of time. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. So that we're required to do an annual inspection by the lease and by their requirements. And we were able, that part of it we were fine on, but the time it took to get the work items from the inspection was too long. Mm -hmm. So, in the time it took from when the work orders were generated <coughs> bless you, bless you, you. to when it was actually completed, in a lot of cases it was too long, and then when they looked back at the work orders, they saw, what do you mean they weren't home? They weren't home. Or not, not right now. They, they wrote, the guys wrote right on the That's sheets. That's good. Yeah. What they said. Mm -hmm. Documentation wow. is what so What they important. said, and they were like, you can't do this. That's right. He said, you got to let them know that this is unacceptable. He said, how much time is it taking the guys to go to their apartment and they bring the stuff with them thinking they're gonna be able to do it right. and then they're not, they're not getting it done. So they said, no, you gotta, you gotta fix this. And when they came in, this was just the test run. Like they get, this was the grace period. Right. So when they come back next year, they're not gonna be so nice. You know what I mean? They give you an idea of what they're looking for mm -hmm. and what you have, you know, how you had to um, turn an apartment within 60 days or you had to file a waiver. Mm -hmm. So it's, we've never been in that situation. We've never, since I've been here, we've never gone that long. But like they said to me, you know, even if you think you're going to be over 30 days, file the waiver mm -hmm. then because they're looking at how long it's taken people to do the work. They wanted mm -hmm. to know how, much, how many people we had working here, how much time they spend on the state property. Most of their time is spent on state property because that's the oldest property right. that we have. That's the, the reality. Even though we have more federal units than state, they do spend more time at the village than everywhere else. But that's okay because we're just going to make sure that the work orders stay, like all our emergencies weren't an issue because they have to be closed out within 24 hours. So that wasn't a big deal, but now we have to go in and make sure that everything is classified the right way. Like anything involved in leaking water is an emergency. So even if it's a drippy sink, mm -hmm. a drippy toilet, it's a waste. It's a waste. So we've got to go back and make sure. So I have to go back to January to make sure that all the work orders from 
2017 were entered mm -hmm, correctly mm -hmm. so that we don't get jammed. One thing we were, we were very good on was um, occupancy. We were 100%. So there weren't any issues with as far as our occupancy goes. We didn't get any, there weren't any questions. The work order thing was kind of like, uh, I knew it wasn't going to be good when they told me what was required. And when I went back in, I just told them flat out, we need to work on this. So. Well, they gave you the time to do it. So. Yep, yep. And the inspection piece of it was fine, but the amount of time it took to get the work items done wasn't. Right. But now that I know, that they're going to be looking, then we're going to schedule it to respond to what they're looking for so that we don't look bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But it's going to be a change for the residents because they've been, no, I don't feel so well today. I think you should come back at the end of the week. No. If that's the case, the work is going to get closed out. And right. You call us when you're available. And unless it's, unless it's water or electric an or an emergency, then they're going in whether they give them permission to or not, and they can go in. Yes. They haven't, they've been trying to be considerate and mm -hmm. it's not gonna play well for us next year. So they can go in without if it's permission emergency, or not? Well, actually, oh, if, if it's emergency. Actually, okay. if they've called in a work order, yeah. they've already given permission. Yes. Yeah, as far as that goes, but mm -hmm. you give them a call, say, the day prior to you going in and letting them know that you're going to be there tomorrow or? No. No. Mm. No. They usually call them to tell them that before they're coming. Yeah. They do call to tell them yeah, before they're day. coming. But, but that mean, day. You don't they, don't, a... they don't plan out because it, it would never be, we can't schedule like that because anything that's water or an emergency goes well, before. Emergency, understand that. It would go before anybody they called. Do, do you know what I mean? I do it to a yeah, point. Yeah, we have five facilities. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to schedule it if you don't know what's going to happen in any one of those facilities. Well, and it it's kind of nice if you let them, if you call them, and just let them know that you're coming. And well, we're going to try to get it right now. We're all caught goes. up. Instead of just walking the door and saying they're not home, or right. we're all hey, caught we've up. Called as... in. Excuse me. We've called. If somebody has called it in, it means that there's a problem. And somebody's going to be coming. I know, but if Why you're coming, a, if you're coming, coming a week later, I mean, people don't know when you're coming. If you call, at least they know when they'll be there. You know, it gives them more uh, to say yes. I'll be there that that, that time and day. Yes. Well, we can do. I what don't the, have a problem with that. We can do what in the emergencies you can't call. do anything about. That happens. That happens. You got to do it right away. But I'm just saying it. it maybe that will help bring it down a little bit with people not being there that day. That might help too. You can look just at a it. suggestion. You can look at it. All right. And see. But. Because they're going to be doing siding, cutting grass, doing railings. So if they can look at the work orders as of right now, they're caught up. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's not like we have a huge backlog. If there's anything, it's like shades or something from yesterday. So most of the work orders are all That's good. Caught, caught up. up. Good. So it's just going forward. But we've had a lot of plumbing problems up at Packachug for some reason. Could be the water. But... Mm -hmm. But that's those, understandable. But that's those emerging. plumbing problems, but we don't have the staff that's going to be calling the other people that, that's going to be saying, like, we're not, we that's don't have. That's what I was just thinking of. We don't have, like, the customer service piece. Right. I don't have time to be calling people to say, oh, by the way, they're going to have to reschedule. Remember, we had to cut two people. I still. Do you know what I mean? I understand that, but I still, I think it's. I think we can find a way to be courteous. It's more people. courteous and more helpful. You may not have to. Keep fighting over it. If somebody says, you know, they're not going to be there, there's no sense you going to there. You go to the next one mm -hmm. instead of backtracking, going to once or twice or whatever. It, well, they save a lot of headaches. They have phone lists with and them, and the people, so yeah, they can well, they call them and just say, you know, is now a good time, and if not, then you know, move on to the next one. You know, if if it isn't a good time for them, then it isn't a good time. If you've got a needed repair, it's a good time any moment. I would think, but... Not if you're not there. 
they, they have permission to come in to our apartments at any time. If we've called up and we've got a problem, we want it fixed. There's a problem. So if you can come today, fine. If you can come to, if you've got to come tomorrow and I've got a dentist appointment, too bad. The dentist doesn't want you to cancel. And you don't want to cancel. So let the, let the workman come in and do his job. Well. Otherwise, you know, you, you, they're going to spend a lot of time calling everybody that they think they're going to get to, and then maybe they don't get to them, so they're going to have to call them and say, well, I can't come today. Well, if you call you them know? a day ahead of time and say, listen, we're going, to be, we're going to be there tomorrow, instead of going there when, and they're not there, I don't know. That's my, my, my opinion, and I'm going to stick to it because I, I still think, think it's a courtesy thing we should be doing. That's my opinion. Well, I think it's going to depend on the work orders. If it's a light right. bulb in the refrigerator, that's out. Yeah. It's a light bulb in the refrigerator, that's out. I mean, is that an emergency? No. 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 Is that something that somebody can give you permission to go in and fix? Yeah. Yeah, if they give you permission to go in and fix it, go ahead. Right. But as far as if it was a light bulb in the bathroom and it's the only the only light fixture in the bathroom, then clearly that's an emergency. That, it's not an emergency. No. Well, it is if there's it's a, a priority. priority. Yeah. Like, it's it a priority. Could also be an emergency. You can't it's say. Light, a light bulb's not an emergency. It would be a priority because it's a safety issue. Right. Do you know what I mean? That's but it's not point. an emergency. If the toilet is overflowing and it's, it's an going down to the first floor, <laughs> that's an emergency. there you go. Do you know what I mean? So there's yeah. different <clears throat> priorities, <throat> right, on Different what needs ways. to be done. But I think we can find a way to be courteous but not taken advantage of anymore. Right. No, don't, I don't want you to be taken advantage. We've been played. As far as that goes. We've been played. But and the work oh, has clearly showed it. Feel the way I do about it. Yep. No, I understand what you're saying. No, but I people can make the residents talk. Yeah. That's why I say, hmm. We hear you, kiddo. Because <laughs> I put my own light bulb in the refrigerator. They feel that they <laughs> the rules are for everybody, don't they? Well, you have certain people that are like that. I do agree. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, if so you, that's what the deal is with the work orders. But we have to do the right. same for every person, rather than whether they're well, that's it. a pain or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And anything we can charge for? Charge. We need the money. Mm -hmm. We don't have much choice. Mm -mm. May I ask um, what the, that would be that you would charge for? Damage that they've done? Somebody breaks a toilet seat, we're just not going to give them a new one. They're going to pay for it. Oh, okay. I mean, if we gave them a toilet seat in good working order, and they broke it because they stepped on it to kill a bug <laughs> on the ceiling. That's right. They cracked the toilet seat, and they're going to have to pay for it. Definitely. Because that's not normal wear and tear. No. <laughs> Just saying. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Or are you all set? I think I'm all set. Okay, any member items? Several uh, tenants have asked me if the board could meet at PV in the room up there. So, if possible. And they've also asked about the room being open that has been locked because of uh, tenant misbehavior. Yeah, issues they had, yeah. I have. I have no problem with having a meeting up there. Um, if you want to take a vote on the board to do so, or do we feel comfortable with just doing it? I, How do you want to handle that? Go ahead, Roberta. I feel that the meetings should be here at the office. Because there are <coughs> buses up there that they can get transportation on to come here. And this is the office. Didn't the last time here. we did that, big list didn't show some of them? Oh, no, a lot of them no, the last time we did it, I thought there was a big crowd. Yeah, there was, there was a huge crowd. crowd. But the understanding has to be that it is the board meeting and not yeah, that's right. the it's complaint not department. Yeah. You know what I mean? <clears throat> well, I 
feel that you, with all the buildings that we have, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go to each and every one of them, well, we in my only, own personal opinion. We can only go to the places but, where there's a hall. Well, that too. If yes. you only get a hall in certain places, two that's places. two, then we, have, then we should do it. We're limited to two halls. We should do it. All right, our next meeting is going to be our reorganization of the board. The next meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'll be our June meeting, so it'll be the reorganization of the board. Do we have to meet within two weeks after? Well, we election? didn't have an There's election, no election, so. There's nobody on the ballot. Nobody on the ballot, so. Nobody on the ballot? No. Nobody on the ballot. Nobody on the ballot for the housing authority. Oh, for the housing authority. No. It's part of that new as far as the. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I thought it had to be right after the town meeting. The town election is May 16th. Well, yeah. We don't have anybody have on it, so. Okay, actually, that's why I was asking, so, you know, because. What's our June date? June would be June 6th. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And just understand, we'll do the reorganization. We're going to have minutes, hopefully. And a couple policies that I've been working on by then. Okay. No refreshments. Hmm? No what? No. no refreshments. No refreshments? Just saying. That's okay. Got to save the money. Mm -hmm. Any other member so is items? Is the meeting going to be here or is it going to be a, Where is it going to be? Um, I'd like it here, but it's easy for me. <laughs> reorganization meeting. <coughs> Did you hear that else? Maybe Did, want, Did you have a question? No. Oh. Maybe you'd want to do it. Would you the want to do time. it at the reorganization meeting or wait till the following meeting? Well, we don't usually meet. You haven't been meeting in the summer for the last couple of years. For a long time. So this would be like well, the last meeting until September. Well, then we should do it then. Yeah. We should do yeah, it. Yeah. Why don't we make the next meeting there? Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Yep. Okay. So we'll be up at Packerchuk. June 6th, 3.30. Any other members' items? Was there anything more from that committee, Ann? We haven't had another meeting. We're meeting next Tuesday. Okay. No public comment. Um, our next meeting will be June 6th at 3.30 at Packachog. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.